comparison is the thief of joy. I read that somewhere or saw it in a video somewhere, I don't know where. And it can be, it can be if you let it, but it doesn't have to be true. I get a lot of emails from people all over the world and this morning I read an email from someone and it really resonated with me and I thought I really need to make this video because maybe I can provide some advice that can help this person and I think I can. Also maybe some of you can offer advice. This person wants to be a physicist. They want to become the best in the world. So I'm going to start this video by reading this email and then doing my best to answer it. As always, if you have advice for this person, leave a comment in the comment section below. The person's name is Pedro. I'll just say their first name. The subject is life advice. Hi, math sorcerer. I'm a fan of your videos, and I've seen some where you help young adults like me, giving advice not only about math, but life. I write you this message because lately I have been facing a lot of trouble in pursuing my dream of becoming one of the best physicists in the world, which is fueled by my strong passion for the field. I find it hard to describe how much I am in love with math and physics. However, I always feel like I am nowhere good enough. I've been admitted in the best university of my country and of Latin America but I feel like I should be one of the best in the world instead. And I feel like I'm falling behind. My friends, professors, and family always tell me how capable and smart I am. And I have even conquered a gold medal in the National Physics Olympiad before. Wow. I always try my best to better myself every single day, but I still can't feel like I'm good enough. Because everywhere I look, I can always find someone better than me. I won't deny that I do have some skill in math and physics, but it feels like my dream is very far away. And most of the time, it just seems impossible. And that makes me wonder if I should just give up and try to live a happy life being just an ordinary physicist. And if that is a reality, I must accept, because in this scenario, I wouldn't accomplish my dream but I would at least still live my passion. This fear of not being able to live my dream in, is indescribably awful and often paralyzing because I have fantasized about this since I was just a child. I have put some significant amount of work on it and my life basically revolves around it. And this fear is making me sick. I ask you, please don't hold back in telling me any hard truths I must hear about what to expect of myself and of my reality. Thank you so much, Pedro. Yeah, that, that, just, that just hits really hard. And when I read this, I was like, whoa, I got to reply. So I have a couple things to say. So first of all, I think it's okay. I think you're doing the right thing. I think you should continue your dream. I don't think you should give up. I don't think you should say, hey, I'm going to settle for less. No way. You need to be the best you can be and you're doing the right thing. But there's something that I think you could change that you can benefit from. So when you are trying to be the best at anything, and I speak from experience because I was like you, right? I was a student at some point and I always wanted to be the best in every single class. I wanted to be number one. And the point is this, you should always aim to be the best version of yourself. And you're doing that. And you're trying to make every day awesome, which is super key. But the reality is you're going to fall short 99% of the time, right? Failure is a part of the process. And learning to deal with that failure and, and picking yourself back up and saying, hey, I'm just gonna keep working. You know, oh, I had a setback. I'm just gonna keep doing, I'm just gonna keep trying. That's what makes you stronger. It builds character. It makes you tough. It builds resilience. It builds perseverance. And you're doing that now. But the problem you're having is that you're looking at other people and you're comparing yourself to them and you're drawing negative emotions from that comparison. 
I think it's great to look at others who are better than you, who have accomplished more than you, who are smarter than you, who have done great things in the world and say, hey, wow, that person is amazing. That person is awesome. How can I be like them? What skills do they have? What abilities, what qualities do they have that I can emulate? What can I do to bring myself up to par? How are they able to do so much? And what can I do to accomplish that? And that is how you learn and grow, Pedro. Instead of saying, oh, this person is 10 years younger than me and they're already a super famous physicist and they won a gold medal at 16. No, right? You should look at others for inspiration. And it's something that a lot of people have a hard time with. Fortunately, I have been very, very lucky in my personal life or in my life in general in the sense that that is not part of my personality, right? I don't, I don't look at others who are better than me and feel bad. As a concrete example, I make a ton of YouTube videos, right? I'm a YouTuber. I have, I have three channels. And so there's a lot of YouTubers out there that are a hundred times better than me. They have great videos and they're incredible. These YouTubers that have 50 videos and they are super popular. I probably have over 15,000 videos on the internet between all of my channels. And I mean, I guess I'm popular. The point is there's people that are so much better than me. And when I look at them, I say, wow, well, if they can do it, I can do it. I'm just gonna keep pushing. I'm just gonna keep trying. Will I ever be as big as these people? Will I ever be as popular? Maybe not. But at the end of the day, I can look back and say I did my best. And I think that's the attitude you have to have, right? When you look at these great physicists, when you look at friends who are smarter professors who seem like gods because they have so much knowledge, you should look at them and say, yeah, that's a source of inspiration. So use that as inspiration instead of drawing negative feelings. And I think a lot of times people draw those feelings because it makes them feel like they're not good enough. You have to believe that you are good enough. And honestly, and you want you ask for the hard truth, you're just getting started, Pedro. You are. You didn't say how old you were, but you're probably under the age of like 24. I mean, I didn't even start college until I was 24, right? I didn't know any math. At the age of 24, I was sitting at the kitchen table writing down the equation for slope, right? And then there's people out there who already have degrees and they're already doctors at that age, right? So it's okay, right? The point is you try, you do the best you can, and you realize that everyone has different circumstances and you're in a really good position. You are, you are. So I think you need to reframe your thinking and, and look at those people as a source of inspiration and always try to be the best. And life is long. People say life is short, it is short, but it's also very long. You have a lot of time. You're just getting started, my friend. You're just getting started. You have so much time. You have so much time. Look at people who, there's a lot of people in the world, here's an, here's an example, who, who start down a path and they accomplish great things and then they change paths and they do something else great and then they change paths again and they do something else great. To me, to me personally, those are the people who are my heroes. The people who have not done just one thing in the world, but, but multiple things. As a concrete example, uh, there was a man, he, he passed away and I always think it's an interesting story, so, so I'll share it. And I, I tried to interview him, by the way, but um, he was not available at the time. I think he was, he was ill, perhaps. And then a few weeks later, he, he passed away. His name was James Simons, and he was a mathematician. He was a, a, a famous, well-known mathematician. He was the chair of the math department at a major university. I believe it was uh, the State University of New York, I believe. He was the chair of the math department there. And here's the kicker. He quit his job. Who does that? Who leaves, who leaves a really high position like that? Well, he did because him and his friend were, were trading stocks using newspaper tips, but he wanted to take it further. So he formed this company called Renaissance Technologies, which is one of the biggest hedge funds in the world today. And they used mathematics to trade stocks and they were extremely successful. So, you know, you go from a person who was an academic, who was top of the field, 
Very smart man. I've seen interview, interviews with him. You should, you should look him up after this video. James Simons. He's got a great talk that he gave at MIT. It's chilling. It's epic. He quits his job. Then he does, takes a huge risk, does something else, and then does something else great. You know, there, there's lots of people like that. Or Richard Garfield. I don't know much about him, but you know, he's a mathematician. He was a mathematician, and he created Magic the Gathering, right? That's incredible. What an incredible game. I love Magic. I used to play all the time. So, you know, you have these people who do great things in one field and go to another. To me, those are my heroes. And so, do the best you can, right? Do the best you can, and at the end of the day, you can look back, and you can say, hey, I did the best I can. And you're already killing it, my friend. You are. You are. You're already working hard. You've already succeeded. Yeah, you're just getting started. So again, look at others who are better than you and look at them for inspiration. Look at them for motivation. I think that's the best way to do it. And I do think that a lot of this is because people are different, right? Not everyone is wired the same way. Everyone has different strengths and weaknesses. I have weaknesses, you have weaknesses. Everyone's different. So try to work through this one and again, Comparison can be the thief of joy if you let it. And it is in your case, so stop letting it. Look at others for inspiration. Do the best you can and know that deep down inside, you can do great things given enough time and effort. Because you can, right? You can. You might not have the natural raw talent that some of these people have, but there's one thing you can control, and that's your work ethic and how much work you put in, your actions. And you're already doing it. You're already crushing it. So keep doing it. So maybe take a step back and say, hey, it's gonna be all right. I've got plenty of time, my life is just getting started and you're already doing awesome. So that's my advice. I, I, I hope it's been helpful. And if anyone else watching this video has any advice for Pedro, you know, le leave a comment. It, it's a tough place to be in. You know, I know a lot of times I make videos uh, and, and the comments come from people who are struggling with math. Here we have a person who is very, very good at mathematics and physics. This person won, won, won a gold medal in a national physics Olympiad. I mean, this person is incredibly smart. But it doesn't matter what level you're at, right? Whether you're just starting algebra or whether you're at the top. Human beings all have struggles. We all have struggles. Keep that in mind, right? When you walk around in the world and you look at people who are much better than you in their fields, realize that they're just people, right? They're just people. They might be really smart, but they still struggle, they still have to work hard, just like the person who's just getting started. We're all human, no one's perfect. I hope it's been helpful, and I'll end this video with this, uh, just a quick mention of my books. I've got a bunch of math books, Super Powered College Algebra 1, links in the description, Super Powered College Algebra 2, Pre-Calculus for Legends, a lot of books, <laughs> Calculus Alpha, Calculus Beta, Super Powered Calculus, and my best book, my best book is this one. It's called Real Superpowers That Will Change Your Life. And these are all on Amazon. Links are in the description. But this is the one, Pedro, that can help you the most out of all my books. Because you already know math. You're not going to benefit uh, from my other books. They're for beginners. This book will help you. It's all about taking action, which you seem to be really good at. But it does have some other insights that perhaps can help you think about life a little bit differently. Don't let comparison be the thief of joy. You know, People always say, oh, you shouldn't compare yourself to others. If it's causing you negative feelings, I guess you shouldn't, but I personally think it's good to compare yourself to others and draw inspiration from that. I, I think it's a good thing. That's what I do. I have all kinds of people I look up to in the world. You know, there's all kinds of people in the world who have done incredible things, people who are still alive today who have done incredible things, and I honestly think that, I think that people don't acknowledge how great they are. And I think 100 years from now, people will look back at some of the people in the world today, and they're going to be in the history books. Be like, oh yeah, you'll look back when you're 80 and say, oh, I remember that person. Yeah. Do the best you can and keep grinding, my friend. Stay strong.